Just gonna, before we learn this Rambam, I want to learn the Gemara, okay? I'll just read a few lines in the Gemara. The Gemara says in the Yuma, Daf Pevo, 86. There was a rabbi called Reb Masio ben Chorosh. Reb Mathiah, the son of Chorosh, the son of the craftsman. So he asked a question to Reb Elozor ben Azario in Rome. Reb Masio ben Chorosh, where you go? What are you doing? Lived in Rome. And he, Reb Elozor ben Azario came to Rome to visit, probably to talk to the emperor, to be nice to the Jews in Israel. So he traveled all the way to Rome. To do. And he said to him, Masi ben Chorus said to him, Did you hear that the <coughs> there was four types of atonement? Four types of atonement that Rabbi Shmuel would talk about. So he said, No, it's three types of atonement, and Teshuvah is all, with all three. Okay? Now the Gemara is going to explain what the three. So Teshuvah, what did the Rambam say is Teshuvah? You remember? What's the three parts of Teshuvah? Yerachmiel, what's the three parts of Teshuvah? Uh, three parts of Tzedakah. No, Tzedakah is a different thing. Chesed. No. Oh, sure, tell them. What's the three parts of Teshuvah? Confession. According to the Rambam. Confession. And that doesn't mean to the Catholic priest. Regret. Uh -huh. Or to the, uh, the, to oh. the Korean Buddhist. Uh, what does it mean? Confession to who? To Hashem. Oh, no. Guess what? Boy. They had the first time in Korea a Jewish wedding. Really? Yeah, by the rabbi, the, the Chabad rabbi. Were they Koreans? No, they were Irish. They teach English in Korea. They took his job. He used to teach English in Korea. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, you make a lot of money. But you know, you could have made more money if you would have taught Talmud in Someone Korea. Someone actually asked That's me to marry them. I say, I can't do it for any money. So we'll pay I used, more. I used to do it. You they paid me a lot of money. Well, you were there would be lines and lines of official. people. They all, it, was, it, it wasn't like here. There was, the room was full of people, and they didn't even understand English. I was speaking in English. I had a board. Someone would translate. It was like a joke. But they, they paid $50 to come to the class every week. And they gave me part of the money. They, they, those Koreans organized that made a lot of money. They, they like that. They That's their job. OK. Anyway. So. Ay, 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 Usher. Oh, sham, no. What's the next word? Michal. Bo, God, no. You don't know those words. You're going to have to learn them because you have kippers coming up. You know them? Uh, I, I, I don't even know. It goes according to Aleph base. I have to say sleekers right now? No, you're not Sephardi. Okay. You can start in another two weeks. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> so the first part is confession. Now that's with your mouth, right? Uh -huh. The second part is with your heart. What do you have to do in your heart? To regret. Uh, to regret, regret, to be embarrassed of all your uh, sins. Regret. That you spoke lush and horror, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah. To be embarrassed about it. And what's the third part? Uh, not to say... Uh, to accept upon yourself not to do it again. Okay. It's not good enough to say, I, I'm, to I'm sorry that I did it. It doesn't mean anything if you're going to do it again, right? You don't make a vow, do you? You don't make a vow. You made a vow at house Mount Sinai. Your soul stood at Mount Sinai and made the vow to God that you're going to keep all the Torah and all the mitzvahs. What do you have to do? Amen. Well, well, my mother said that the Torah is the opposite of Lash Yohanra. What? What's the opposite of Lash Yohanra? Lash and Tov. Lash and Tov. Tov, you know what Tov is? No, 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 no. I'm you know saying Tov? What does Tov if something, if something Tov mode, and what's Ra mode? Very bad. Uh, uh, oh, look who's here, I have to stand up. The Minkach. Boka Tov. Boka Tov. Do you have a Tanakh? Okay. You have a Bible? You need to have a Bible I'll in this class. Something. Here, give him that Bible. Here. You also need a Bible, no? Thank you. Okay. So, he says like this, if someone, so Rabbi Shmuel says there's three parts to, to atonement, right? And teshuva comes with each one. First one is, if someone 
did a positive, he did not keep a positive commandment, right? How many positive commandments is in the Torah? Seven. Seven? No, I'm not talking no. about for a guy, I'm talking for a Jew. 243. For a Jew. 200 and? 40. 40? 3. 4. No. 5. No? Doron knows. How many positive commandments is in the Torah? How many? Positive commandments. Mitzvah Asay. 248. Eight. Very good. And I told you Doron knows. I See? was going to say that too. You was? Yeah. What else is 248? Limbs in the Very good. The human, the male body has 248. A woman has 252. A woman has more than a man. Did you know that? More what? Yeah. More sinews? No, more oh, parts. Man. Really? A woman has four more oh, parts yeah. than a man. Ah. 252. A man has 248. So really, a woman should have more mitzvahs, not less. But okay. And then, uh, how many negative mitzvahs? 365. Is there? Very good. Which together, 365 plus 248, who's good at math, is? 613. 613. What's 365? Days What's the, the number 365? Hmm? Days of the solar year, solar. not the Jewish year. The solar year. So every day is connected to one mitzvah, negative mitzvah, and every limb of a person is connected to one positive mitzvah, right? So it says here, if you, if you go against the positive mitzvah, for example, you don't wear tefillin. Mm. Or you don't wear tzitzis. Uh -huh. Are you wearing tzitzis, Dora? Oh, you mean... Where are you your tzitzis? Sit here? They're not hanging out. You, you became safari, you don't need be tzitzis uh, hanging out. You can out. sit here if you want. You have to get the blue ones. You, hear? you like blue. Don't be blue. It'll be, be good. It's going to be a good day, Dora. Don't be blue. He likes to sing the blues. <laughs> he likes to sing the blues. Do you like to cash. sing the blues, Michael? Do you like Johnny Cash? So, like How's it go? Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire, Ring of Fire. I like bluegrass. Does the song go? Ring of Fire? You know that song from Johnny Cash? Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire. You know, he's an encyclopedia of hmm. music and movie. Okay. We all live in a yellow submarine, right? Mm -hmm. So which is the greater importance? Not violating positive or not positive? Oh, so let's see. We're going to see from here. You'll okay. tell me after we learn this. So if someone, if someone did, a, a, did a, he didn't put on to film one day, right? And that's not, not because he was uh, sick, because if he had some problem with his stomach, then he doesn't, he's not supposed to wear to fill in. You know, if you have diarrhea or something, you're not supposed to. But he put, didn't put on to fill in. Or he, what other mitzvah to say is there? Can we give me a mitzvah to say Not 248? Or um, both. Saying Shema. Saying Shema. Okay. He didn't say Shema. So then, so all he has to do to uh, atone for it, what does he have to do? To regret. Just do Teshuvah. Oh. So it says here, Omar, and I'll say, if someone did a positive, he didn't keep a positive commandment, and he did Teshuvah, Hashem will forgive him. Because it says a verse, Shuvu Banim Shovavim. How do you do Teshuva? So we said three ways to do Teshuva, right? Confession. Oh. What else? Regression. Regret. Regret and, and not to do again. acceptance it's not to do it again. Three parts. It's what you do Teshuva only if you do it purposely. Not no. Chotosi Ovisi Poshati. Chotosi means by mistake. If I forgot. If you forgot. You have to, still have to do teshuva. When you remember, you have to do teshuva. Yeah. Ovisi means on purpose, and poshati means not just on purpose, but as a rebellious act. Rebellious is much greater. But purpose means that let's say let's say you were busy, you were busy, and you and you uh, and you said, oh, I I can't put on film today. I'm too busy. Or and but poshati means that you didn't. You were busy, but you said, ah, I don't have to put on film. What does Hashem care if I put on film or not? And you didn't put on film that day. So that's called rebellious. You're being rebellious. Okay, so there's the three levels. What? That is the greatest, the highest. The rebellion. That's, rebellion is the worst, right? It's the worst or the highest, depends how you look at it. The highest? Why the is lowest. it the highest? The lowest. Okay. So it says, Shuvu bonim shovavim. If you do the bad thing, shovav means what's shovav in Hebrew? Shovav. Naughty. Naughty boy. Shuvu banim. Isn't there a yeshiva in the It's water? a yeshiva, yeah. Of Berlin's yeshiva. Okay, we have to send him there. Shuvu banim shovavim. We have to say him there. Yes. It's 
better than him being in jail, which he is not now. So, Shuvu Banim Shavavim, you bad kids, do Teshuvah. So this is talking bad that you didn't do a positive commandment. So they, all you have to do is shuvu. You only have, that's all you have to do, do to shuvu. Of our alosa, however, if you did a negative, if you went against a negative commandment, give me a negative commandment, come on. Um, to, to eat co not kosher. Okay, if you had a cheeseburger, if you had bacon, if you, what else? Give me another bacon. negative. Huh? What other negative commandment is there? What if you want bacon? Hmm? Yeah, what, what, what if it could save a life? To what save a life? Whose life? Dish. What if you really like the pig's decide, life? What? What if you really desire to eat on kosher food? Then you have it and you don't. You have a bigger mitzvah. Really? If you go past the McDonald's and it smells so good and you say, I'm still not going to eat non kosher food, then you have a bigger mitzvah. Uh, that's that's what the Ram said. That's what the said. You say if, if you walk by McDonald's and, and, and it smells so good and you still say to yourself, I'm still not going to eat non kosher food? You get a bigger place? reward, yes. Meaning that McDonald's is always kosher? Is there a place in Israel where you can I'm get I'm talking a kosher? about the McDonald's that are trafe. Oh. Can, can you get a kosher bacon cheeseburger somewhere in Israel? They're, they're you probably good, yes, made out of soy. soy. They're all yeah. bacon. Do you have yeah, bacon? Yeah, my kids love, uh, uh, love these, uh, what they call them? I've even forgot what they're called. Bacon strips. Bacon. bacon strips for breakfast, made out of soy. You get them in America. I'm telling you so, could get another animal. Bacon. Bacon. Duck. Bacon. What about the duck turkey Japan? bacon? Is turkey bacon kosher? Well, I don't eat turkey personally, but Come some people do. Two side. Turkey is a question. Yeah. You shall not eat uh, non-kosher food. Right. The positive side is just the adverse side of the coin. No. You shall eat kosher. No, there's no positive... There's a positive commandment to learn it, to know the what's the difference in kosher and non-kosher. But there's no positive commandment to eat kosher food. There's no mit it's not one of the 613 mitzvahs to eat kosher food. Is, is it? Is then what is it? What? There's, what a, is there's a negative commandment not to eat non-kosher. Can we have a shechting class? Shechting class. Is it a positive commandment to, uh, to uh, I think eat kosher? I think we're getting off tangent. We, have to get, we haven't even kosher. started the Rambam yet. Well, let's, let's continue. So we have the positive commandment, which what's good enough for that is Teshuvah. Then we have a negative commandment. So if someone went against the negative commandment, but also Teshuvah, even if he does Teshuvah, the Teshuvah is hanging in the, in the air. What else does he need to get, to, get, uh, to get atonement for it? What do you think? What else does he need? He needs something else. With a positive commandment, Teshuvah is enough. You do Teshuvah that day, you didn't put on Tefillin, the next day you realize you didn't do you didn't put on tefillin, you do teshuva, and you say you're not gonna you're not gonna miss any more times ever, and you uh, you confess to Hashem and you regret that you didn't put on tefillin, you feel now it's so bad. Oh I'm so embarrassed I didn't wear tefillin one day Hashem gives me this crown, the crown jewels, which is greater than the crown jewels of England. And I did forgot to put it on and I, I'm so sad about it, and so embarrassed. So that's uh, and so it's really doing teshuva and you say I'll never do it again. So that's that's to, so that's enough. It's finished. It's good, right? Yeah. Now, but what happens if there's a negative commandment? So tshuva, it helps a little bit, but it's hanging in the balance. What else does he need? Asher, what else does he need? Yom Kippur. Very good. He needs to wait for Yom Kippur. <laughs> so it's going to wait. His tshuva is hanging in the air until Yom Kippur comes, and then Hashem will atone for it. Yom Kippur. Wow. Yom Kippur is, brings atonement. As it says, this is the verse in the Torah. Ki bayom hazeh, on this day of Yom Kippur, yechaper aleichem, Hashem will forgive you, will atone, mikol chatoseichem, from all your transgressions. So chatoseichem, chatos, means a negative transgression. So for the positive transgressions, tshuva itself is enough. For the negative, you need teshuva and Yom Kippur. Okay? But let's say if someone, ha if someone uh, doesn't do Teshuvah, he fasts on Yom Kippur, but he doesn't do Teshuvah. Uh -huh. will, that, will that help him or not? Will it? Yes. No. He has to do Teshuvah too. Yom Kippur only helps with Teshuvah. He has to repent also. I've seen some people smoking on Yom Kippur. That's a big problem. What, what, why do they do that? What, what's the justification for that? I mean, they know that they're... They know, they, they know There's that they no know justification. That, I've never they, seen anyone smoke. 
They, they know that they're, they're supposed to. Sure, he was Jewish? What? What's the you sure he was maybe, Jewish? Maybe, Jewish. maybe it was Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av, he could smoke. Well, really, he should never smoke. But it's never eat McDonald's either. Hmm? Certain McDonald's in New York City. What? Can't smoke in McDonald's? They smoke on Yom Kippur, they smoke all year round. Bloomberg said you're not even allowed I mean, to drink a big cup of Coke, right? <laughs> he outlawed big Why gulps. Kippur, right? Big gulps. You, you know what makes. Uh, and he's Jewish. Well, 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 That's what he was concerned food, about, big culture. gulps. It's not the food, it's the music. Okay, so that's the second level. Now there's a third level. If he transgressed an Avera that has Kores, which, which Avera has Kores? He get, cuts off from the Jewish people. Either in this world he dies early, or he goes to hell in the next world. Kores, um. which... Bringing people to a Vodazara? Mm. Yeah, that's even more than Chorus. That's Mace. You mean someone who brings, it's called Maces. That's even worse. He gets killed. He gets killed by the Besdin, by the courts, like Jesus. But yeah. if they don't know about it. What? If they don't know about it. Then if who caught. doesn't know about it? If he doesn't get caught. If he doesn't get caught? Right. Okay, so if someone does a transgression that he gets killed by Hashem or gets killed by a court, so let's say he breaks the Shabbos, then he needs Teshuvah, Yom Kippur, and he needs something else too. What's the third thing that he needs? Hmm? Sadaka. No. The third thing that he needs is, who knows? Exactly. You know? No. Did we say Teshuvah? No. Teshuvah you always need. For mitzvah say oh, you need suffering. Teshuvah. For a lot of negative commandment, you need also Yom Kippur. For um, a, a sin that's uh, associated with death, you need a third thing. Teshuva, Yom Kippur, and Yisurin. What's Yisurin? Suffering. suffering. He needs to go through some suffering. How do you do that? Um, such, such as so what? Hashem will, will give it. it. Such as what? Suffering. That could be part of it. But, but he's talking also, if Hashem... Um, makes him suffer, so that that atones for him. And then he might not be killed. In this world, in, in, in the well, here we're talking. There's no Beis Hamikdash. So there's no Sanhedrin, and uh, but so he he's not going to be killed for for breaking the Shabbos. Uh -huh. And then he wants to do teshuva for breaking the Shabbos. So he does teshuva and he waits for Yom Kippur. And he also, if he has suffering, he says, "Okay, Hashem, I realize my suffering is to take away my sin." He accepts it, so then he's also going to. Um, Suffering means illness, or yeah, anything. poverty, or what? Uh, yeah, anything. Any type of suffering. Any type of suffering. Okay? So, and then the, the verse for that is from Tehillim. It says a verse in Tehillim. Ufakadati beshevet pishom, uvinagoim avoino. Which I'll translate that, it's in Tehillim chapter 89. And it says, I will punish their transgression with a rod. So what's a rod? A stick, right? I thought you had the One minute. On Wait. I'll punish, Hashem is saying, I'll punish their transgressions with a rod. And benegoi, benega means uh, affliction. affliction, their sins. So I'll take away this, their, with the rod, I will take away their purposeful sins, the pesha. And with with uh, afflictions, I will take away, which is probably a lower level than than a rod. There's a rod, which is like someone gets hit with a stick on purpose. And then there's affliction, which might be less. That's their sin that they did by mistake, oven, which they did a, a pesha. No, pesha oven isn't by mistake; it's on purpose. But pesha is when you're rebellious, right? The pain experienced. Expiates. What's expiates? Is that how you say it? Expiates. Expatiates. 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 Ex. Expiates. Greater. X. S. What were you in Korea? X. What did they call you? X Nilo. No. <laughs> it's grain something out of nothing. Expert. 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 Uh, O'Neill. The sinful pleasures. He says, Rabbi Yona suggests that person who violated such sins involve himself in charity, deeds of kindness, Torah study, 
and other mitzvahs which protect from suffering and atone for one's sins. I guess there's another way. It doesn't have to be through suffering, it could also be through Torah studying kind deeds. Is it expatiate? Expatiate, maybe, I don't know. Okay. Is there two T's? Or but now, what? This is for violating the Shabbos? Two T's? Yes. Or one any, any sin that has a penalty of death. <laughs> so you can avoid the penalty of death in t by doing three things. Expiation. Doing teshuva, atone for uh, Yom sin. Kippur, oh. and suffering. suffering. I mean, but I then, expiation means, means atone. Suffering. What? Afal Judaism. Okay, so that's what Rabbi Yehuda just said. Suffering on purpose. Okay, that's what Rabbi Yehuda, not on purpose. If you accept the suffering that Hashem gives you anyway, oh. of being single, right? Or not making enough money from your gym. That's suffering. You know, or having to run around and uh, uh, and uh, be very busy and not have time to study Torah. That's also suffering, right? Yeah. Expiate means atone for sins. Atone for sins. Okay. And that, but then there's a fourth thing that he brings, which the Rambam also brings, which the Gemara brings. And that's called Chilul Hashem. What's Chilul Hashem? What's Chilul Hashem? Making Hashem look bad. Desecrating God's name. If you're a yeshiva bocher learning in Devar Shalayim and you have you wear your tzitzis and you have a big yamulka, and then you go down to Joel Solomon Street into the bar and, and dance with the girls over there, then it's a chil Hashem, right? That's a chil Hashem. What if it helps? I hope you don't do that. Learning, learning greater Torah. Well, don't do me any favors. What's that place called? Itawan, right? Itawan. Itawan is the street that's in Korea. That's a public disgrace. But that, exactly. Disgrace. That's Hill Hashem. It's public. Oh, that it's the in public. public. That's where everyone... Desecrating God's name. Or even if someone is goes into uh, is a, a, a front person, a front person goes into the supermarket in Monsi, mm -hmm. and there's uh, people online, and he says, ah, I, excuse me, I just have a few things. I just want to pick. Can I... Uh, uh, I want to go before you. These people will be waiting for 20 minutes, and this, this rabbi know. comes, they says, I'm in a big hurry, so I don't have to wait online. Please. No, usually and people say, go right ahead. I know, but you shouldn't even ask it. It's not no, nice. No, you shouldn't ask it. Just it's wait till they offer. It's not Hamas, but it's Chil Hashem. Just because they say, look at this Jew. They look at you, look they're at like, this rabbi. Oh, that's all you have, go right ahead. Look okay. at this rabbi pushing go in the line, right? Cutting me off in traffic. Yeah. Okay, so serious. that's Chil Hashem. So Chil Hashem means you have to, the, the, the more religious you are, the more the nicer you have to be to other people. Or if you're because if not, you're going to cause a Chil Hashem. But I thought it's good to, uh, to eating make a cheeseburger to pay us. That's why he wears a cap. What's your opposite of complimenting uh, somebody? Huh? Uh, oh, friend. Uh, no, Embarrassing no, someone? No, but in a, in a, in a tactful Putting way. someone down? Uh, it's rebuking so, so them? Rebuking them, yes. Yeah. It's good to rebuke people sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. It's, you can't always, in public. We, can, we, we can't always in private, in private. We have to rebuke people in, in private. Right. Why you want me to rebuke you in public? I don't in care. In private. I have nothing to rebuke for. You're a perfect tzaddik. You're so holy. You have nothing bad to say about me. I like rebuke. You do? But if we in rebuke private. in private, we're not setting a precedent. Like a person hangs, for a day to, sh to set a precedent. If you do bad, look what's going to happen to you. So rebuking, rebuking private, it's very good, but you're missing out on setting a precedent for the others. Precedent. Mm. But the Torah says you're not supposed to. The Torah, in the same verse where it says you're supposed to rebuke someone, it says, but don't embarrass them. In the same verse. So you're not supposed to embarrass someone when you rebuke them. Okay. So, someone who has Chil Hashem, he hasn't, the tshuva is not good enough. Yom Kippur is not good enough. And even suffering is not good enough. The only thing that will, will help is death. Physically. How does that help? Helps. That helps? When he dies, Hashem will forgive him. He, 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 he has to wait no for death to be it's absolved? Exactly. Yeah. That's what not it in, says. Not, not in life, but in death he's absolved. That's what it says. That's why. It is. Why? What's the mitzvah of sometimes some sins? There's three sins that a person's supposed to die rather than commit them. Murder, adultery, right? and adultery. Why? Because if someone commits those sins, is desecrating God's name. So is desecrating God's name. The only way he can not desecrate God's name is by dying. No second chance, sir. Eh? Not supposed to. You're supposed to rather die than desecrate God's name. 
So that's when, that's when if someone commits those sins, it's desecrating God's name. Idol worship, idolatry, and adult. He hasn't done vidui, he hasn't done confession. He should do he just dies. He should without. do confession first. Yeah. Only against Jews. What? What's only against Jews? Adultery and murder, right? No, I think it's. No, I'm not sure. Uh, murder, I'm not sure. It might be also for non Jews. And uh, adultery, what do we know against Jews? Adultery. Their marriages aren't recognized. Yeah. Ah, to have adultery with a non Jewish <laughs> married woman. I don't know. Okay. Let's continue. So the Rambam brings this thing, and I'm going to read it. Is there any punishment of Karis for, like, sexual acts? Yes. What? The relatives. Oh, or, or a married relatives. woman. Yeah, or a married woman. Very Jewish woman. Okay. So, it says here like this. Even though Tshuva atones for all sins, and the essence, I'm not, number four, if you have the book. Even though Tshuva atones for all sins, and the essence of Yom Kippur brings atonement, there are different levels of sin, and hence differences in the degree of atonement. There are sins that can be atoned for immediately, which is what? Positive commandments. Another sin, which can only be atoned for over the course of time. What is implied? He says like this, he explains. If a person violates a positive commandment which is not punishable by karet and repents, which positive commandment is punishable by karet? There's only two. Does anyone know? You can go get it. No, go get a clean tissue. Don't give it. Which one? What's with you? I just said that you're a perfect tzaddik. You're Oh. Yeah, if you need the tissue, go get No, go get a clean tissue. If a person violates a positive... Which one? Your money. Brit. Okay. Bread, and what's the other one? Uh, <laughs> eating chametz. Eating chametz on Pesach, Passover. The two positive commandments that are punishable by karet is not having circumcision, not chametz. Chametz is a negative command. Paschal sacrifice, not bringing no, the korban Pesach when you can, when there's a temple. So if someone violates a positive commandment and repents, he will not leave this place before he's forgiven. Concerning these sins, Yirmiyahu states, Return, faithless children! I will heal your rebellious acts. That's the verse I said before, right? Shuvu banim shayvavim. What's the verse say? Erpa meshuvay seichem. Shuvu banim shayvavim. Erpa meshuvay seichem. If a person violates a prohibition that is not punishable by courts or execution by the courts and repents, like a negative commandment, then shuvu has a tentative effect. What does tentative mean? Tentative. Um, uh, it's temporary. No, it's dependent on. Dependent. dependent. So what's the thing that brings atonement? Suffering. Well, what did we just say? What's bringing us atonement? Doron, come on. Suffering. What? No. Just a negative commandment. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Brings atonement, as it says, this day will atone for you. But you have to make tshuva too. Right. So tshuva, tshuva has a tentative Kippur. effect, and then Yom Kippur brings atonement. Yeah. Okay. The sooner you repent. You don't wait till the last minute of Yom Kippur. You start repenting before in Elul, right? Repent, Elul. sinners! And thou shalt sin no more. Thin no more. If a person violates sins punishable by karet or execution by the court and repents, then Tshuva and Yom Kippur have a tentative effect, and the suffering which comes upon him, the suffering which comes upon him, will complete the atonement. He will never achieve complete atonement until he endures suffering. For concerning these sins, the psalm states, I will punish their transgression with a rod. Nevertheless, many texts of Musa suggest fasts and penances to avoid suffering at the hands of heaven. So by fasting, you can do suffering to yourself without waiting for God to make you suffer, which might be worse. So, but today they say that instead, if someone wants to fast for, for atonement, mm -hmm. instead of fasting by not eating, there's another way to fast, and that's called Tanit Dibur. Not listening to your wife. Hmm? Oh, I'm not, not saying you're not speaking. Not, not speaking, just studying Torah. Oh. Be more careful not to speak uh, nonsense or lush and horror, right? Uh, oh, silent. Fasting your In words. the present age, however, most authorities suggest that we devote our energies to positive activities without inflicting suffering upon ourselves. See the book of Tanya, Igeret HaTshuva, chapter 3. 
So if you want to see it actually inside, the Tanya, who was the first Lubavitcher Rebbe, Reb Shneur Zalman of Ladi, who was a Talmud of the Magid, who was a Talmud of the Baal Shem Tov, says... Can we learn Tanya? We can learn. We're learning Tanya right now. He says that today, you don't wait for suffering. Today, by doing positive activities, devote our energies to positive activities without inflicting suffering, that will be better I'll for the sugar. with positive? What? Exactly. Like now, he continues. What does the above apply all this when the desecration of God's name is not involved in the transgression? However, a person who desecrates God's name, even though he repented, and keep a ride while he continued his repentance, and even experienced suffering, he will not be granted complete atonement until he dies. The three, repentance, Yom Kippur, and suffering have a tentative effect, and then death atones. As Yeshaya states, this is the verse that we learn it out from. V'niglo ba'oznoi Hashem tzvokos. Hashem told in my ear, told Isaiah in, his, in Isaiah's ear, im yichupa ro'over in azeh, that lochem, if this sin will not be atoned for, atemusa, until you die. So what's the sin is talking about that Yeshaya was told by Hashem that nothing will help, it will be tentative until the person dies, is? Till he dies. Till he dies? Yeah, and as a matter of fact, I, it, not so much Yeshaya, Yeshaya himself was killed by his grandson. You know the story? Well, he, Yeshaya, he said that he's living between a nation of impure lips. And because of that, he was killed by being uh, he cut by his lips. He was cut by his mouth, by his grandson. By, by his grandson? Yes. Menasha killed him. Because he always would scream. Menasha was a, was a wicked king. He would worship idols. And his grandfather, Yeshaya, his mother's father was Yeshaya, and he would and he'd say to him, why don't you listen to your Zaydi? Why don't you listen to your Zaydi? Zaydi made us laugh. Zaydi made us sing. And Zaydi made a kiddish Friday night. Zaydi, oh my Zaydi, how I loved him so. Zaydi used to teach me wrong from right. But Menasha did not sing that song. Menashe got upset. He's the king, and here is this old man comes and tells him, Hashem that. told him this, and Hashem told him that. Sounds and he wouldn't good. listen to Hashem. And not just that, he killed his own grandfather. Can you imagine that? So wicked. And some even say that Menashe did Teshuvah. He knew he was going to be he wicked, though, sugar. right? Exactly. You know the story. Very good. You never heard that song? It was made by a student who learned in the Irish line called Moshe Yes. The Gamma Duo. He did shuvah and that negated murder? Yes. He could do shuvah even for murder, yes. Even for murder? Yes. Yeah. It's very hard, but it's possible. It is possible. It's a possibility. Okay. Mm. was a tree when he killed him, yeah? So in a sense, does death negate all sins? No. You have no. to do Teshuva too. Is Dr. Kevorkian a murderer? He was Teshuva before yes. he dies. Yes. Okay, we, I only have a few minutes left. I'm going to start chapter two. Just the beginning of it. Now that this, so the chapter, the first chapter of the Rambam, let's go through it again. He explains the, the concept of teshuva, he starts off by saying that the mitzvah of teshuva is written in the Torah through confession. That's the way the mitzvah is written. But he says that it includes not just confession, but also regret and acceptance for the future, not to do that sin again. And then he says that the, in the temple, there was, uh, when the temple stood, there was the Sair Azazel, right? There was this Azazel that would atone for sins. Goat? Remember that? The goat. The goat that was thrown off the thing. And... I remember. Yeah? And then he says about the different types of, of ways to get, to get atonement, the three levels. The first one is if someone did a positive commandment, he, sinned, he broke a positive commandment, then he did the tshuva itself is enough. 
If he broke a negative commandment, then he also needs Yom Kippur. If he broke a commandment that uh, has the penalty of death, whether it's by heaven or by, by the Bedin, he would also need to have suffering, right? But if it's Chil Hashem, then only the death. All three are, what's the word? What's the word? Hung in the balance, how do you say it? Tentative. Tentative. It's tentative. Until he dies, right? But now the Rambam speaks about something called Teshuvah Gemura. Teshuva Gemura, complete Teshuva, which is in the higher level. Not just Teshuva, but the complete Teshuva. How is that? Oh, so the Rambam explains. Uh, the conditions necessary to show a person's repentance is complete and he will not return to a sin. Okay. So he says like this, what constitutes to complete Shuvah? A person who confronts the same situation in which he sinned when he had the potential to commit the sin again and nevertheless abstains. <laughs> so let's say he was in New York and he was really hungry, passed by McDonald's and ate a cheeseburger. And then he really regretted it and uh, he, he had a real bad stomach ache and he really regretted what he did. He said, I know Hashem is doing this to me because I ate that non-kosher uh, cheeseburger. That and that's why I now I have a real bad stomach ache and now I'm going to do tshuva and I'm going to uh, confess to Hashem and I'll never do it again. And the next day, he feels good again and again he passes by the McDonald's. <laughs> and the smell is so good, he wants that cheeseburger again. And he says, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I promised Hashem yesterday that I'm not going to do it. So he's in the same situation. He's, if he still has the stomach ache, the stomach if he still ache. has the stomach ache, so then it's not complete repentance, <laughs> right? But the stomach ache went away already. Nevertheless, he abstains and does not commit it because of his tshuva alone, not because of fear. Fear of what? Stomach aches. Fear of divine prayer. Oh, okay. Fear or lack of strength, physical vigor. For example, this is the example he gives. I'm reading what the Rambam says. A person engaged in forbidden sexual relations with a woman. Afterwards, they met in privacy in the same country. While his love for her and physical vigor still persisted, he even took Viagra. Nevertheless, he abstained and did not transgress. That's a complete Balchuva, right? So a complete Balchuva is someone who's in the same situation and he abstains, then he's considered a Balchuva. That's a Balchuva. So if someone is, didn't meet the same woman uh, and he doesn't care about the second woman, you know, and, and, uh, and he said, ah, I'm not interested in her, and that's why he didn't sin, that's not Teshuva Gemura. It might be Teshuva, but it's not yeah. Teshuva Gemura. Okay. But how, how could it be Teshuva Gemura when he is doing uh, Yichud, yeah? Oh, Yichud. Okay, that's another Avera, you're right. But maybe it wasn't Yichud. Maybe, you're right, it says... Nisyachid Imo. Nisyachid Imo. So you're saying he has another Avera. Okay, but he still has a complete Balchuva in Avera that he did, so maybe he has another Avera of Yichud. Okay. And also, there's examples that you're not over on Yichud. And Yichud is an Avera in itself? But then he wouldn't be able to do it anymore. What? What's Yichud? Hey, what's ah, you're not allowed to be alone with a woman in the. In, that's what they told us as chaplains in the army. Uh -huh. Never be alone with a female soldier. Never. What are you That's what I do with you know, what about a, <laughs> a, lift? Hmm? a lift? It's very temporary. Then you can't do much between step between floors. What if it's you and a lot of women? Maybe you can give her a quick kiss, but that's done. You can stop the lift. Then it's a problem. <laughs> if you stop the lift, then you have a big problem. Or the elevator, right? Big problem. Yeah. What did you say? What if it's you and a lot of women? Ah, then you're allowed. More, if it's two women, you can be with two women in the same room. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. I think two men with one woman is not allowed either. They take it's Yichud. Because they men, two, two men with one woman is a problem, maybe. It's very complicated. There's a lot of rules. Yeah. It's in Shulchan Aruch, a whole simon in Shulchan Aruch about the laws of Yichud. Yeah. Where the Bachur, he yeah, wants to stay with his arms. And his aunt said, sorry, you can't stay with me. And his aunt was like... Doesn't matter with the age. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I have a question. Yes. So if death absolves you from sins, almost all sins... All sins. Death absolves you from all sins. Then but only if you did the other three things. If you and did Teshuvah, and you, and you fasted on Yom Kippur, and you also... Um, 
If you die right after Yom Kippur, then that's great. That's for sure. Thank if you someone you dies right after Yom Kippur, you die. then you earn right Olam Haba? If someone dies... On death, okay. He's done no, but he also this. needs to suffer. For some sins, you need suffering too. So if, someone, if someone did to Shuv on Yom Kippur and then right the last second of Yom Kippur he passed away, then it's uh, very good because he... need to be tortured to death. I'm asking, does everyone earn Olam Haba? By after atonement, suffering, etc. Yes. 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 Everybody? Uh, yes, everybody. All Jews. Jews. All Jews. Now you can feel better. No, no all Goyim. Goyim. Israel. No Goyim, only Jews? Some Goyim, if they're righteous Gentiles, like they get a portion in the world to come. In the world to come, <laughs> world to come. Okay. More than a Jew who didn't make tshuva. I don't know. Every Jew has mitzvahs, right? Every Jew has mitzvahs. Every Jew is holy. Is my family going to be okay? Holy brother. Shlomo Kavach is to call everybody. Is my family going to be holy okay? Holy brother. You have to, you have to uh, be in touch with them. Where do they live? Florida? Florida, Jersey. Okay, be in touch with them. Phone them up, say, I love you. Come visit me in Israel. Come study in the Bar Shalayim. Or if they're female, send them to Neve Yerushalayim, down the street. You know Neve Yerushalayim? You have sisters? Yeah, I always see the girls there. They always take the last bus home. Oh, okay. Maybe all, maybe one of them of is your is your potential <laughs> they're uh, shidduch. They're part animals. They I've are? Seen them, I've maybe seen them wasted. Wasted, really? like falling asleep from okay. all passed out. Maybe on one of them, stuff. you need to marry one of them and turn it, get on the right track. <laughs> hmm? A lot of them are from, from birth, though. Really? Oy vey. Oy vey. What are we going to do, Doron? Huh? The Frumis <laughs> don't want to have anything to do with us about the Chuvim. <laughs> no, they tell you that you go to people for Shabbos, right? Yeah. A lot of nice people. But they wouldn't let me marry their daughters. Maybe they would. I know I know Balat Shuva that married uh, from, from birth. Okay. My wife is a Balat Shuva. I, I married uh, Balat Shuva. I didn't mind. My parents weren't too happy about it, but not so much because she was oh, about really? Shuva, because I had an, and because my older brother wasn't married yet. But if I would have waited for him, oh, he got right. married after all my brothers and sisters. Wow. Mm. He took his time, huh? So you know, took his two. time. You know, two. Yeah. So they weren't happy because Yaakov, you married Yaakov took him. his time. And you married. And they thought I wasn't ready. But I went to the stipler and I said to the stipler, "Do I have to wait for my older brother before I get married?" Because my parents said I'm supposed to wait says, no, you don't have to wait for it. And if I, it's good I listen to him. Because all my brothers would have waited. <laughs> they would have wanted <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be 